Okay, look. So, um, so this session is about um, using CVCRM to communicate with your contacts. Um, if you're not supposed to be here, then now's the time to leave, I guess. Um, now, I forgot to put a picture of a sleeping cat because we're on the, ga on the uh, graveyard session. So if you're feeling a bit tired, um, like there's plenty of spare seats towards the back. So otherwise it puts me off and that's no good. Um, so I've only got one slide. Um, the idea is to show as much of the system as possible. So um, the agenda is looking at communication preferences in Civi. How can you set them for a contact and what, what the options available? Um, what are the different outbound communication <laughs> methods? <laughs> we just warned you about that. <laughs> um, how to individualize communication, so dear John as opposed to dear sir or madam. Um, using scheduled reminders, so hands up who knows what a scheduled reminder is. Not bad, okay, good. So for those that don't know what it is, it's probably one of the most misnamed things in Civi. It's actually um, automated emails, um, so triggered emails if you like. Um, and I'll show, you, I'll show you roughly what the options are and stuff. Uh, then we're going to come on to some extensions. So we've got the MS uh, Outlook, so the Microsoft Outlook extension, and using that to file emails into Civi, uh, as well as create cases if you want. Um, we might have a look at word mail merging. Let's see. Depends how far we get into this. And then the final one is Civi rules. So there was a, there was a session on Civi rules on its own. Um, I'll just cover it briefly. If you went to that one, you, you'll see a bit of that already. Um, but it's quite important for communicating with your, uh, with your supporters or donors because um, you can use rules to, to trigger an activity if somebody donates more than X amount or has done over a year, etc. So, without further ado... Okie dokie. So, I have a demonstration CVCRM here. If it's too small or big, please shout. It's too small. So, down towards the bottom, I've got communication preferences. Now, effectively, this is what you would use at a contact level. So, if somebody doesn't want to receive uh, mass emails, then this is where you'd mark it, say no bulk emails. If they didn't want to receive emails at all, again, you would just mark that. So Civi will treat those two things differently. If you send out a, a mass communication, so using the mailings tab um, from Civi, if they've got no bulk emails, they won't get included in that email. If they've got do not email at all, they won't get included in bulk emails, but they also won't get direct communication that you've set up for them. Um, and I'll show you the difference of the two in a, in a sec. Um, so you've obviously got those sections down there and you've got um, the preferred communication language, you've got their greetings. So again, it can be quite important if uh, a lot of doctors don't like to be called Mr. Uh, they get annoyed. So you can uh, customise their greetings. So I can pick a different format. So um, for those of you who don't know what this stuff is here. That's effectively uh, a token in Civi, um, which is like a mail merge field in Word. So Civi is going to replace the person's first name in the middle bit there with, with their first name. So they'll get Mr. John Smith um, as their greeting. The final option on there is to customize it altogether. So I could, uh, I could give them a custom a custom greeting and then anytime I use the token of email greeting and email communications that's the greeting that will go for this person regardless of what their actual name is um, and you've got the same for postal and addressee greetings um, if you implement your system and then decide to change so you might have implemented it one way and then think actually no we need to renew redo all the greetings we don't want the deer in there anymore that's a common example that you get um, you can change the default in Civi, and then there's a background job that you can run that will reset everybody. So it will, it, it will look at the data again and, and set it all how you've reconfigured it. So it's quite flexible in that sense. The other option to bear in mind is um, this on a hold thing. So 
in a person's email address, or the email addresses that you have for them, you can mark them with different settings. So you can say which one to use for bulk emails, which one's the primary one. And also, if there's been a bounce or there's, there's a problem with the email, you can mark it as on hold. And again, Civi will then ignore that email when it comes to sending out communications because it thinks there's a problem with it. Um, and there's a nice red marker, so if you are speaking to that person, you can then correct it or find out what the problem was. Um, that's standard, yeah. Yeah, n none of what you're seeing is like customized in any way. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so just the final part on like the contact side, uh, how you communicate and how you, uh, how you kind of segment your data is normally through groups. So um, we'd normally have like a group of Civicon London contacts uh, and that might be a mailing list, and then I would use that mailing list to communicate with those people. Now, the thing with the mailing list is people can opt out of it. So the one thing to be careful about, and I see this quite a lot, is if, for instance, you're a membership organization and you set up a, a, a group of current members, and you also set that group as a mailing list, if, that, if you then email that group and somebody unsubscribes, they effectively come out of your current members list because they've unsubscribed. So my recommendation is always that you run the mailing groups as a separate group. And it can be built on the, on the current members group. So you can say, give me everybody who's in the current members group, and I'm going to call it mailing list members group, or newsletter members group, or whatever you want to call it. And then that way, you're kind of protecting the two groups. So they don't, that people don't accidentally take themselves out of groups that have nothing to do with mailing. OK. Uh, uh, and just the other part of, um, of CBC Army is activities. Does everybody know what an activity is? Hands up for those who do. Oops, quite a lot. Quite a lot of shy people or people who don't know. <laughs> Can't work out which it is. So an activity is basically any kind of interaction this contact has had with, uh, with the charity or the user organization. Um, so in my case, I've got tell a friend. So I've told somebody else about something. And I've also got um, an email that I've got filed against my contact record. All of the activity types are in here, so I can have different activity types. And these are all configurable. So your implementation, you could have more or less different types. Um, so I can record that I had a meeting or a phone call with this person and, and keep all of that. So it all comes down to communication, um, keeping the communication history. Um, OK. so. From here, so if we go through the how to send outbound stuff in its kind of simplest sense, the, the most basic sending of an outbound is just send an email to the contact. So if they've got an email address, you will see that option. If they don't, you won't. <laughs> so again, that sometimes that catches people out. They go, where's send an email? And actually, the contact doesn't have an email address, so you can't send them an email. Um, and we've also got um, print PDF letter. So if we wanted to send uh, physical posts, snail mail, then I can produce a PDF letter for this contact from this, from directly from the contact record. So that's the kind of real basic communications. If I wanted to find all my contacts in my database, uh, let's do that. So I, I could find them all, and then what I might do is say, right, okay, let's pick them all, and from my actions, I am going to send an email. OK, so this is a direct email. It's not a mass email, because I have physically picked some people and I'm going to email them. So Civi's rules are slightly different in this scenario. It doesn't get classed as a bulk email. So if these people have do not bulk email against them, it doesn't matter. They're still going to get this. They're going to get this communication. There is a restriction to this. You can only do 50 at a time. and. The biggest question that I normally get is, I don't want to send this because Priyanka is going to see that Deepak's getting an email. She won't. So every person is sent an individual email. They're not CC'd in. Um, there's no way for them to see each other's um, email addresses or contact details or anything. <coughs> so what's the, what happens in a bulk email? Is it like I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, yeah, bulk email is a little bit different. Um, with Civi, we've got templates. So again, how we communicate is we 
often, like if you're using Word in your Microsoft users, you'll have lots of Word templates and you'll have different templates for different things. So in Civi, you've got the same functionality. So I can, I can keep, keep a template. So here's a sample newsletter template. There it is. And what you'll see is tokens. So for instance, here, the squirrely brackets, um, that's a token. So in this template, whoever gets this email is going to get a greetings, John, or greetings, Sarah, whatever the name is. And if I wanted to add more tokens, I can just come into here. I can, I can pick the token that I want. Okay. So if I wanted to add in the postcode, I could do that. And then they're going to get the postcode afterwards. So in that way, I can add in different tokens into the body of the email. Sorry, is that, are those templates under mail? Uh, no, those templates are under, so I've got them open here. So they're under. Uh, communications message templates. Right. Yep. So yeah, I've been talking about a lot of credit and um, you just use MailMe and do the if type and so you can say if this person is a member of the code that's going to then I'll do this. Yep. You can do that if you've got Smarty templates turned on. I'm looking at Karun there because yeah. <laughs> this is his field. <laughs> Well, you need to turn it on. So there's a configuration in Civi to say turn on Smarty Temp. You allow the use of Smarty Temp. Tem yeah. yeah, and then you can do more clever stuff as well. You could say if they've been to five events, you can actually get into some more coding and say if they've done X, Y, and Z, then, then have this piece of text. Yeah. That, that does it both. Yeah, I mean... That's a that's a wide that's a bit of a wider use case. So, it depends on what the how different the content is of those emails. It's the whether you did it as one or two, um, and it's how they opt out as well. So it's the list you're sending to and what they're opting out of is probably the more important side of it. Mm, okay. So um, once I've done that, I can save that template. So if I've made some changes to it, and I think actually from now on those changes should be permanent in that template. Then I can update it. I could save it as a new one. So if it's something that I might want to do once in a week or something a little bit different, I can create a new template from there. And finally, on this, I can do attachments as well. And the number of attachments, again, is, is controlled by a configuration parameter. So I can increase it from 3 to 5 or to 10 or whatever I want. Um, the only other thing on attachments is the size. So by default, um, with Drupal installations and Civi, it's 2 meg. Um, you can increase it in Drupal, and, but you'll probably also need to increase it on your server. So there's a few different configurations. You probably need to, to up it if you're going to do more than 2 meg, but you shouldn't need to send more than 2 megabytes attachments anyway. <clears throat> uh, and then the final bit on this is I'm getting a stat down here saying one email will not be sent to one contact um, because they have the do not email set on. And that's pretty much it. And then I would just hit send, and that would send, send them an email. So that's a real kind of basics, almost like from Outlook, I'm sending them an email. They're going to get it. It doesn't matter about their preferences. It doesn't matter what they've said. Um, Does it show you which contact it's not going to send? Uh, yeah. That's a good question. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I, yeah, I think, I think it's because of my screen size, actually. No, I don't think it's there. Like up the top where the list was. It, it says one do not, but not which one? No. Not which one? <coughs> uh, no, it's saying do not because it got. Um, it's a feature for the oh, no, no email address, yeah, maybe. Who knows? Okie doke. Sorry, yep. this is the direct, we're still on the direct email. Yeah, this is direct email. So we'll come on to, we'll, let's go into mass mailing. They might not have an email address, so I just picked it's everybody. Not the bulk thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not the bulk thing. They might have, yeah. So they might have do not email, or they don't have an email address. So they're the two. So, um, or it's on hold. Yeah, I think it gives the three or four reasons in that message why it might be. 
Uh, so mass mailings is a little bit different. So mass mailings is based off groups. So mass mailing is where I might want to say, right, everybody who's subscribed for a newsletter, I'm going to email them. So it's normally an activity that you're carrying out that's not ad hoc. It's kind of planned it, and you know what content you're going to send. Um, so I will. So again, I've got the same option, so I can pick a template. I can pick exactly the same template as I did before. Here it's a little bit different in that I can pick the from email addresses as well, so who did I send it from. Um, and you can set up as many email addresses as you want from email addresses. There's configuration issues with your setups. You need to just make sure that whatever utility you're using to send allows the use of those email addresses. So sometimes, like for instance, Google Apps, it doesn't matter what you set in Civi, Google Apps will set it as the email box. It doesn't care. So it's just those things to be aware of. Yes? This is uh, 469. Yeah, 444. Yeah, no, this is, this is, so this is uh, trimmed down. So everything is on one screen. So in 44, you had to go step one, step two, yeah. step three. So you don't need to do that anymore. Upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> 44 has probably got like a billion security issues anyway. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I can preview it and I can send a test, which I always recommend people do. If you can sign yourself up for litmus accounts or something along those lines, the first few emails you send out, I would definitely do that anyway, just to see what they look like in all the different mail clients, because you'll be amazed how different they look. Um, and then finally, I can send it to a test group. So again, if you've got people who need to sign off your emails, you can just set up a test group and always send it to them first. They approve it and then you send it out for real. So just going through all the other options, so attachments, obviously, I can add um, attachments. Um, headers and footers, so if there are particular headers and footers that need to go out with all your mass communications, then you can have them in. Normally, that's where the unsubscribe links live, so that they're nice and hidden away and probably in white text and white background. Um, Publication, so this is if your email should be, click here to view in browser, like if you want to give that option or not. So if you say no, then they can't, have, they're only ever going to see it in, in the, uh, they're only ever going to see it in their email unless they've got to log into your site. Yeah. So public pages means anyone can see your newsletters. User admin means only people who've got logins to your CMS will be able to see uh, the, the kind of browser versions of your email. Uh, response tracking. So what do we want to do with the emails that we've sent? What do we want to track? So normally these are just left as default by people because the standard setup is fine. So just to talk through them, so opt out. Yeah, we want to track that because the opt out message is if they if they opt out, they get taken to your website to actually confirm it, and that's the message that they'll see. Um, and that's the resubscribe, and the same with unsubscribe. They've changed this a little bit more, even. What's the difference between opt out and unsubscribe? Uh, unsubscribe, is, I, unsubscribe is I don't want any emails from you or the other way around. This opt question. Out, I think, is I don't want any emails at Yeah, all. yeah. No. Nope. Right, yeah. So, so it's no. So it's one is no bulk emails, and that is opt out. And the unsubscribe is take me out of the group that you sent the email to. So if I sent it to the newsletter group, and I've also got a members group, I'll just get taken out of the newsletters group and not the members one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, Yes. You can send them a direct email using the other route, but any email that you send through mass mailing won't, won't get delivered to them. Yeah. Uh, so, and then the final thing is, what are we tracking? So we're tracking click-throughs and we're tracking open. So when someone opens the email, looks at it, we'll see, the, we'll see in the email reports. And if somebody clicks through links, we'll see that in, in the email reports. Um, I don't think I have an email report to show, actually. Uh, but you can always have a look on the demo site. There's a couple in there. 
uh, or what they look like. And they basically show you how many you've sent, what the percentages are, and things like that. Okay. Yeah, I was down. <laughs> so, okay, so if it's my client, I say never tick that box <laughs> because it does horrendous things. It means basically Civi gets in the middle of the reply and that's what you, you don't really want that happening. So um, that reply will come into Civi, Civi will track it and then it will go on to wherever it's supposed to go. And from my experience, I don't know of anyone that uses it successfully, like properly successfully. So um, you can, I mean, what you can do with it is, is there and there's a bit of conf config to make it happen. Um, I would test it first. So if you track replies, then they'll come into Civi and it will track the reply, it will keep a copy of that reply in Civi and then it will go on to where it will, wherever it's supposed to go. And the auto respond obviously is doing, sending them a, we've got your inquiry. Out of curiosity, I know some, some of your e email in email, email programs, you can recall email, you can, I think that would be, can recall emails. Yes. Can you do that with, with Civi Contacts? Um, so the way Civi Mail works is the actual sending process is a cron job. So there's, a, there's a, a, a job in the background that sends the emails. So normally, again, with our clients, we'll set that to send like 100 every minute or something like that. So if within the first few minutes you've realized, actually, I've made a mistake and I shouldn't have done this, you can stop it at that point. So you would have sent out a few hundred, but that's it. Um, but you can't recall them. Once they're gone, they're gone. Unless, unless you are sending them through your exchange server or something in the middle that you've got control over, then you could potentially stop them. Potentially. <laughs> um, and with, it, with any of this mass mailing, I can save the draft and continue later. So I don't have to finish it all now. I can sort of say I'm putting it together. Sorry, just yep. briefly. Ah, oh, okay. Because I do want all the replies in so they, yep. they then get dealt with by other people. Yep. Um, so that's different. So the track replies is different. Track replies is effectively saying when someone replies, it's going to be a Civi, a Civi box that it's going to hit first, and then Civi's going to read that box and do stuff with it, and then it's going to push it onto wherever it's supposed to go onto. So it'd be like an alternative. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's like the verb stuff. So it's a little bit like you're playing with fire. But what you're trying to do is fine because you can have all the replies coming to info at and then just get Civi to do an inbound uh, email to activity and, and set that. And I'll, I'll show it. Probably everyone is looking like, what are you talking about? But <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll show that. So, yeah, so there's mailing reports. Um, like I said, I don't have any, I don't have any, because I've never sent it from this test account. But there is mailing reports, and you'll see the overall report for that job, like how many bounced and exactly who bounced as well. Um, and you can see who opened it. And we have had some clients ask us to do um, jobs where you see who's opened it but didn't buy something and then send them a follow-up to so say, we noticed you clicked, but you didn't follow through. What was wrong? <laughs> it's a little bit big brotherish. I'm always nervous doing that, but it's there, and it is recorded, so you could do it. So, no is the short answer to that. You can see the actual links, but there's no, there's no overlay of the stats with the email. That doesn't exist in Civi. Um, on the other hand, Civi is, can be fully integrated in with MailChimp. So you could continue using MailChimp to do mass mailings if you wanted to. Um, Okie doke. Uh, is there any more questions on mass mailing? We okay? Okay. So I'm going to move on to schedule reminders. If there's any questions about anything, just shout them out. I'd rather do that. Just mm. thought about mass mailings. Amazing. Um, if, if you suddenly find somebody who should be sent a mass mailing and they weren't, maybe they don't just subscribe or they change their email address yep. or something, um, can you send a mass mailing to one person afterwards? Uh, no, but what you can do, <laughs> um, what you can do is, I'll just show you quickly. Uh, so in the recipients, you can include the new ones, 
and exclude anybody who got the email before. So you've got the ability to say, I want to send it to these people, but not if I sent them an email yesterday. Uh, no, that's it's not that one. It's this. Is what happens when they change layouts? You're like, mm -hmm. there used to be two boxes. So the 4.4 guys will see there used to be two boxes, <laughs> and you could exclude from one email and include a group. I'm pretty sure you can still do it. There might be a a, a setting in the background that I haven't set. It's because, no, you're right, but it's not the group thing. It's because I've never sent an email. So once I've sent an email, then I'll get the ability to exclude, exclude it from here. It's because I've never sent it. No, Good. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> OK, so just going back to schedule reminders. So schedule reminders actually is a, is a good way to reduce the amount of um, business processes that you guys have to do, like the, the amount of time you will do. So for instance, if someone new joins, then you'll kind of have a process to say, I need to send them this email, I need to then follow it up and do this and that. With scheduled reminders, you can automate a lot of that. So for instance, if I add in a reminder, um, so I can build a reminder off of any of these things. So I could do it off for membership. So I could say, right, okay, when membership are coming up to, I don't have any memberships, so this is not a good example, but if I had membership types that were coming up to end their end dates, then I could say, right, send them an email one month before. Say, thanks for all your, thanks for joining last year. These are all the things you did. Whatever I want to put in there. I can have it based on activities. So if we had a phone call and it was done, then I could automatically get Sibby to send an email out. So every time someone records that information, that contact will get an email. Um, yeah. Yes, the, the follow-up email doesn't actually send an email? No. <laughs> Even if you assign it, no. The follow-up is just creating the activity. But then we managed to get it to send something, but not in the future. Not, you know, what, what, what would have gone out is the activity reminder, which is different. So when you create an activity and you assign it to someone, they get, a they get an email saying, someone has assigned you an activity, this is what you need to do, but I will get it straight away. I won't get it like one day before I'm supposed to do it. So what, that's what you would have got. Yeah, that's what <laughs> you would have looked at it and gone, what's this? <laughs> it's not the email content I put in. No, so you would do it this way. So basically you create an activity, the follow-up would be an activity. So it might be call this person back. Yeah. And then here you would say, right, this, any phone call activities that are scheduled one day before, I want to send a reminder. So it's through the schedule so reminders. It's two stages because you're, you're allocating a task. Yes. So the task part is you saying, I want you to do this phone call. And then Sibby will do the reminder element. Yeah. So you don't have to do it every time. You just do it once, leave it alone, and it will take care of it. Will take care of it. So this is where I can say I want to do it one day, uh, one day before. So I would normally, my setup would normally be something like that. So it's a phone call. It's scheduled, so it hasn't happened. And one day before, I want to send out an email. And I can pick here. Where is it? Yeah, so I pick here who the email should actually go to. So is it to the, to the assignee? Is it to the targets? Who is it that I'm sending it to? So I could have two different emails going out Yeah, to, to whoever. So what you're talking about is civil rules, and I'll come on to that a bit later. <laughs> you're preempting my whole thing. 
<laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. That's good. We're, we're short on time anyway. <laughs> um, no, but that's civil rules. So where you're kind of doing workflow, that's, civil, that's where you use civil rules to kind of manage that process so for you. What's the relationship with you asked and what's happening? The relationship is that they've, they've taken a call yeah. or there's been some action. They know they need to do, carry out a follow-up action and they're setting when that should happen. So they're deciding, in a week's time, we need to call this person back. It's not system generated, because there's a manual, there's a decision there. Right, so that decision they would have made and stored. So I'll show you, let's, if I go. So I'll go to someone. So what they're saying is, right, okay, so I'm going to create an activity. I'm going to record that there was a phone call. Okay, and the subject was mailings. And it happened today, it's completed, it's done. That phone call happened, I took it. And what I want to do is schedule follow-up, because I know um, in, in a week's time, uh, I'm going to assign it to myself. So that is effectively creating a follow-up activity. <coughs> yeah. And what they're saying is that follow-up activity, we want to be email reminded to someone. So now when you're looking at the contact record, there's two, there's two activities. There's a completed one, so we took the call today, but we know we want to call them back in a week's time. So that's, that second one will trigger the email. Um, with assigning something to someone, you need a, 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 the last name of the person. But if there are more people with that same name, uh, for instance, if, there's, if, 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 if the last name is the same and the first name is the same, how do you know which one you need? Uh, you can use email address now, I think, in there. And if you can't... You, what, what you just did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a contact ref it's a contact search. So you should be able to use email address. And I think you can, in 4.4, I'm not sure what the options are. It might get out of jail. <laughs> and, but in, um, in the later versions, for sure, you can control what goes into those contact reference. So um, again, I'll just show you for the sake of completeness. It is uh, display preferences, I think. So like here, contact search. Uh, no, that's the other one. Uh, where are you? No. Somewhere in CIVI is the ability to control what that quick search does. No, you can't, you, you can't do it for these. There, I thought there was another option, but I'll, I'll come back to it at the end. There is, yeah, I just can't remember where it is. <laughs> it's somewhere hidden away in the menu options. Um, Okie doke, so, uh, so, schedule, so sh schedule reminders is that way, and like I say, oh, let's go back there a sec. Basically, in terms of entities, so uh, things that I can trigger it on, Sorry, looking like I don't know what I'm doing. I can't actually see my mouse. In these. Um, so, let's see. Back. Uh, yeah, so these are the um, entities I can do it on. So, for instance, I could do it on an event. So, I could say, right, this, this big event's happening. I need to remind all the participants a week before don't forget to install XAMP and WAMP <laughs> um, so that when they come to developer training, they have a machine that works. Yeah. So I could, um, I could set that automatic reminder up. So I don't have to do anything. As people register for the event, they'll automatically get emailed one week before. One day before, I could have a different email saying, don't forget, we start at 9 a.m. You need to bring X, Y, and Z. Um, 
So I can do that for that and I can do that for memberships as well. So in the same way, if someone new joins that question before, you could just set a schedule reminder to say a week after they join, I want them to get this email and not do it through the newsletter route. So they get this kind of welcome email directly from Civi before they get the, the mass newsletter one. Okie doke. And um, just to touch on it, I don't want any questions about this, but I'm just going to tell you, um, you can do SMSs as well. So the schedule reminders in 469 will allow you to do SMSs as opposed to emails, so you can choose. So if it is event-based, then sometimes it can be better to send an SMS because you're more likely to have the right, the, the right contact details for that person. Um, but again, it's up to you. You do, yeah, yeah. So like Clickertel was the one that most people use. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can do replies as well. So if someone replies, that can come back against their contact record too. Um. Yes, yeah, yeah, against the, against the sender. Um. So any questions on schedule reminders? Clear as mud? Cool. Okie doke. Um, so what else did we have? So message templates. We had a question about message templates. So all of this outbound stuff that I'm sending, where can I store it? So under communications, there is a message templates menu. And you'll see two types. So the system ones are things that the system will send out automatically. So if when someone donates and you've said thank them or you've got the contribution receipt, that's the receipt they'll get. And you can edit it and you can change the format of it. I'm going to warn you now, I'm going to press edit and you're all going to go, what is that? But we're just going to do it anyway. And you can decide not to send it. You can decide not to send it. So I pressed edit and everyone's going, what is that? So that's fine, <laughs> as per the demo. Um, so you need to know your way around HTML. You need to know what you're doing before you start editing system workflow messages. Um, and the reason is there's a lot of smarty stuff. So this stuff you see is context driven. So what did they donate to? What was the amount? What financial, to what, how, what payment instrument did they use? A lot of logic is built into these templates to kind of work this stuff out. So that's why they're a little bit weird. Um, if you do want to change them and the wording, what I normally do is just find the area of wording I want to change and then amend it. So if that I wanted to change, please print to something else, I would just change that. And, and, and then uh, get out of this screen as quick as possible. Um, so all the message, all the workflow messages are there, and like I so say, you do have access to them um, if you do need to change them. And then finally, these ones, the user-driven ones. Do you have a question? I was just going to say, yeah. I think it's nice, probably nice to point out that you, there's a reverse, and then once you've edited it, you can revert back to the default. Yeah, you can you can push it back to the original. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but probably by then, a few people have got it. And <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what is this? Um, so yeah, I mean, you can always create a test site, a test version, and mess around with it until you're happy, and then just copy it into your live one when you're done. Uh, so the user-driven ones are the ones that you would have created. So letters and things like that, any communications that you're going to send out, you would have created there. So like, if you've got the direct debit got for you guys, then the, the direct debit welcome letter might be one of these things, and you just send it out. OK. Um, what else do we have? So, Civi rules, so that's the next thing in my tabs. So let's look at that. So Civi rules, we had a session on it earlier today. I don't know who presented it. Eric's not here, right? Um, but there was a presentation on Civi rules. Civi rules is, the idea of Civi rules is to be able to automate workflow in a nutshell. So that when events happen in Civi, you can react to them. So you're not kind of limited to having to hire a programmer to do some specific logic for you, you can decide what to do. So an example of that is, I'm just going to cancel this and go back. Um, let me take me to the right place. So I'm just going to see if we roll. So an example that I've got set up here is when somebody signs up for Civicon London, I want to create an activity. Yeah, so if I edit it, I'll show you in a bit more detail. So what we've got is the event. So a contact is added to a group. We've got what group is it? So the group is Civicon London. And then we've got 
our action. So what do we want to do? So what we want to do is create an activity. And when we create an activity, we have some settings on it. So we're creating an activity type of tell a friend. We're making it scheduled, and we're making the, the subject of that, of that activity tell a friend. So once I do that, then you can start to see, well, actually, if you can create activities that way based on events, then I can start to use scheduled reminders to then send out emails. I can create another rule that says, right, if this happens, then do that. If they open an email or they do something else, I can kind of get more clever with it. Um, and how you create a rule, so let's have a quick look. So if I want to add a rule, I can just add it in. So create a new rule. So what is my triggering event? So you kind of look at that list and go, oh my god, I have no idea. Um, but it's actually not too complicated. So, um, so there's basically like event participants are added, deleted, removed, a new grant is added, households, individuals are added, changed. Yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of events there that I can use uh, to trigger some workflow. Um, so a new membership, payments come in, for instance. Um, tags added to someone, so somebody tags somebody as being interested in volunteering, you could then add them to the volunteering group automatically, you could then trigger an email and kind of start getting complicated, but just taking into account, we had a conversation earlier about creating um, recursive rules. So you might, for instance, create a rule that says, right, when someone new comes in, I'm going to add them to the newsletter group. And then you might have another rule that says, when someone gets added to the newsletter group, create a new activity for them. And that's the same activity that then adds them back to the group. So your rule just keeps adding, keeps going nuts. So you do need to be a little bit careful about how you configure these rules. <laughs> Otherwise, you could end up with a massive database that's actually full of crap. <laughs> um, so for ours, let's do, so we're going to do, so if somebody, soft credits, does, does it, who knows what a soft credit is? Uh, that's more like it. All right, okay, so no one, good. <laughs> so basically a soft credit is when, if you're fundraising organizations, uh, you normally would have a fundraiser, or somebody's actually out earning or telling people about your charity. They will then do an event, so they might run the marathon, and then donors will donate to them. So they'll say, oh, actually, I'm really happy you're running the marathon, here's 10 quid. So that 10 pounds that's been given is often soft credited back to the fundraiser. They're not the donor, the donor is me, the, fundra the fundraiser is Robin, and I've given him the 10 pounds. So he gets a soft credit because he's actually done work on behalf of the charity. I'm getting the donation record because I'm the giver, uh, and that's how the soft credit would normally work. So in Civi, you can have a soft credit like that. You can have a soft credit split as well. So I might give 20 pounds, 10 of it to Robin and 10 to Chloe. So I've got two, two, two different 10 pounds soft credits going, going over two different people. So I'm going to create an event like that to so say, right, okay, when someone soft credits to somebody, I want to do something. So the next bit is add the condition. So what, it, it's not just any soft credit. What is it? It's a, that soft credit must meet some criteria. So what, it, what are the criteria? Um, so I'm going to say the total amount. So a soft credit of X amount, oh, maybe not, it's not going to let me. See if that works. It's probably not a good example to pick. Mm, let's try that. Okay, so I'm saying they're not in a group and they're not in the Civicon London group. Let's see that. Yeah, so I'm saying somebody who soft credits and they're not already in the Civicon London group. No. Nope. Then I add the action. So what do I want to do when that happens? Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to add them to the Civicon London group. Yeah, because they soft credited, they weren't in the group. I want them to go into the group. I think you're going to track yourself there. I didn't mean to go back. I think they're not in. There's two, there's two things to choose. Yeah. Is one is in this group or is not in this yeah. group? And you've got to think that. 
I've got it is, it doesn't matter, I'm not going to actually run it, so no, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> um, so the second part of this is, do I want to delay that action? So, or do I want to do it immediately or do I want to wait? So you might have, so if you're doing scheduled reminders of activities, what you might do is, well, don't do this straight away, wait for a week, because then I'm going to trigger my scheduled reminder, so the email is going to go out on a, on a day that I can control, as opposed to whenever it happens. Um, so I might delay it by five days and say, no, don't do it now, do it in five days' time, so they'll get, their journey starts in five days. Or I might do it on the first Sunday, so that's when they all go out. Right? So <laughs> you can pretty much do whatever weirdness you want to do. So, um, but there's often good reasons to do it. You might have it, events and meetups that happen on Sundays, and that's why you want the games to go out then. Um, so I just save that. So which group do I want to add them to? So I could add them to more than one group if I wanted to. I'll just add them to the one. <coughs> and I'll press save and nothing happens. Um, eventually that will save. Um, and then if a soft credit, if someone came and gave a soft credit, then that rule would apply and all the actions that, that are supposed to happen are happen. And there's no restriction, the number of rules and how complicated you get. So you, can, you could create a proper donor journey that way. Um, Okie doke. So any questions on rules? Yeah. So could you make it that that then pushes that out? So for us, like that needs to make some action to stop Right, so, f yeah, so, for, so that's Chloe from Kulaf. And for them, we have activities sending information to dotmailer dotmailer is effectively like mailchimp but cleverer I'm MailChimp. sorry <laughs> it's like a mensa equivalent of mailchimp <laughs> 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 so it's it, it, you've got the donor journeys inside dotmailer you can actually get quite clever about how you communicate with that person and the, the flow of emails that go out so what we did there was we said well if we can get activities to talk to dotmailer then we can use all of the power of this stuff and any time a specific activity is created, they will get added in. So you can control exactly when they, when they go in that way. Yeah, so those activities will show up in that list anyway, your ones. And then you decide which activities are going to send to Dotmailer. So there's another configuration tab that you've got. Did you create um, certain activities? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, the, the actual thing, anytime you see one of those spanner things, any other questions on the okay. So let's have a look at um, the agenda. So app configuration. Um, so recently we released uh, an Outlook plugin um, for CTRM, which I'm trying to figure out. So um, when you install the plugin, you can install all the instructions of what's to do on our website. But once you install the plugin, you end up with this extra tab up here. Uh, and that's our for Silly CRM. Uh, and then what you do is you connect that to your Silly CRM. <coughs> okay. <laughs> so um, once you've connected that to your Silly CRM, so you, there's two bits of information you need, the API key and the site key. Both of those bits of information are all made available by whoever set up your specific element of that. Uh, there is an extension that shows you your API key or your contact record. You can't get to it, so you, you can see it. Um, and then once it's configured and set up, then I've got basically what happens is if I send a new email. Right, do I want to file this into Civi or not? Yep. 
And if I say yes, then the next thing it says is the person you are filing this against already has a case. So do I want to add this to that case or not? So if you're not a Civi case user, you can turn this function off on the plugin. So it won't ever prompt you about a case. It will just file it as an activity and it will record the, C the email in there. But I can do, and what I'll do is I'll say I'll create a new case. So case is actually quite useful if an incoming email should result in some follow-up from you. Um, so if there's a set procedure that you guys should go through, then you can open a case and that can have your activities and a workflow in there. Um, but I'll create a new one. So the first option is what case type do I want to create? So you might have um, you know, uh, someone who needs assistance or membership sign up. You might have somebody who's asking for help. It, it could be all sorts of things. And these are all coming from Civi. They're not in the Outlook. So whatever you've configured in Civi will show up in, in Outlook. Um, the status I can mark, again, it depends on the status I've set in Civi. And I put in the subject. So And the details are. So that's the case. So that's effectively the umbrella that all the activities for this case are going to fit into. And I quite handily get a link to that case so I can click into it and see actually what's happened in Civi. Open that case, I won't here. And then the next bit is now what activity do you want to create? So I've opened a case, but I might want to put this activity as first contact, or I might want to put it as an incoming email. I might, it's entirely up to me as to what I do. So I'll just, uh, actually, I think we have an email one. thought we did. I'll just do it as an open case. And then email sent, uh, pretty much as normal. If I go back to um, go back to Civi, and I look at cases, now I've got two cases, and you'll see the new case in Outlook's there. You'll see that I've got the two activities there, and I can go into this activity, and I will see any attachments that are there as well, in theory. My internet wasn't so poor. Um, no, I won't show it. Um, so all of that kind of happens real time. If there were multiple contacts with that same email address, I'd get prompted in Outlook as well as to which one of these is it. And again, I've got, I've got a setting in there to remember that. Would you, whichever one I've selected, it will remember that going forward. So I don't have to keep doing it. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, if there's any questions on a bit of pressure, we need to finish, right? <laughs> so if there's any questions, please shout them out. The, every, the, the Outlook extensions on our website, there's a, two, two, uh, there's a plugin and a, a Civi extension. Yep. That plugin is for Outlook, yeah. Is it just 2010? 2010 or 13? Yeah, either. Uh, not at the moment, because it, it's based on the email address. So if there was multiple contacts with the same email address, you have to pick one at the moment. But you can always go back in and edit the activity and go to it with. Any more? Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.